Well, what's interesting is right now, Bitcoin's been around, it's been around 11 years, 12 years right now? About to turn 12, January 3rd. Okay. So, yeah, so you mentioned that, that there's an unknown time frame as to when it's actually going to go through those stages and it mm-hmm. be uh, uh, you know, completely uh, accepted as a, as a uh, medium of exchange. And uh, as I'm watching just the markets themselves, right, to, over mm-hmm. the last couple of years, you can see the, the extreme volatility in Bitcoin, right? Oh, yeah. And I think that uh, uh, maybe it was 2018, 2019, where it, you know, things spiked up dramatically. It was up to like 20,000 points, uh, $20,000. Uh, right at the end of 2017. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. then it took a crash down. And so like a lot of people are skeptical about, you know, is this an investment? Well, I, I guess <laughs> it, it is an investment. What, what did you take? Do you think that Bitcoin is more of an investment or is it something that uh, uh, we should just, you know, dabble in a little bit or you not? Know, uh, what's your thought process on that? Um, right now, uh, the best thing that anyone could do if they're getting interested in Bitcoin is to ignore the price. Um, the day-to-day swings are like, like one thing, one thing to recognize about the dollar and uh, government currencies or central bank currencies more specifically is that they work overtime to try to cover up risk and volatility. That's their, that's essentially their job. It creates a massive systemic risk and s- systemic imbalance, which they don't recognize until this giant crash happens and then they, they blame it on everybody else. Um, but, you know, regardless, what they end up doing is smoothing out what should have been seasons where, you know, like uh, activity fell a little bit or we got a little bit over leveraged and we needed to contract a little bit to keep things in balance. And instead, they just paper it over. They just print money to make sure that there are no swings in the market. Well, Bitcoin is illiquid in comparison to these other monies and currencies. uh, And it also has no central coordinator. There is nobody to paper over when things happen in the market. But this is a feature because what it means is at the end of this, we get real prices. We get market prices that matter and market prices that tell us the reality of what is going on in the economy. Like we had a huge shock uh, that where it dropped 50% in like four days right during the, the COVID crash. Um, and why was that? That was because there was a huge credit crisis or the huge credit crunch happening uh, and a, a liquidity crisis happening in the dollar. So people were having to sell liquid assets. You can sell and get money out of Bitcoin really quick. It's always running 24-7. Nobody shuts down that market. Um, so they were selling gold. They were selling Bitcoin. They were selling anything that they could get their hands on to basically prop up their you know, leverage positions that were getting clobbered in the rest of the market. Um, but because of that, it reflected the reality of what people had to do to, to keep those things alive. Bitcoin was giving us a real price. Now it it almost immediately just started climbing right back up to almost the exact same price. It was like 9,000 something and now it's 9,000 something. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, so it's a short term price swing and this happens all the time, both up and down, but it continuously swings back to this median. Ignore it. Like unless you are a day trader and you want that to be your full time job, this is a long term game. This is sound money and it's going to take 10, 20, 30 years, just like the Internet. You know, 20 years ago, if somebody could buy a stock in the Internet, uh, like I would have told them, you know, if, you know, some big company goes out of business or something explodes upward. Just ignore it. In 20 or 30 years, the Internet is going to be massive. We're going to be using it for everything. It's going to be on your phone, in your pocket. Um, and I truly think that that is the same time scale that we should think about Bitcoin and uh, also the same potential ubiquity of its future. 